Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Status, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our bleeding and coagulation playlist. This is video number 96. We'll talk about the coagulation factors. We have how many? 12 factors. Oh, but the last one's 13. Yeah, but factor 6 does not exist because they later realized that factor 6 has nothing to do with coagulation whatsoever. So let's get started. Please watch my previous video on the coagulation cascade before watching this one. As you know, hemostasis has many steps. They were talking step number three, the coagulation, the secondary hemostasis thanks to the coagulation factors. Here is secondary hemostasis and we're talking physiology. What are the names and the numbers and the functions of the coagulation freaking factors? We have discussed primary versus secondary hemostasis before. Here, platelet. Here, coagulation factors. Platelet plug is the end result, fibrin thrombus. Plated count, bleeding time, plated agrogometry are the lab tests. Here we have PT and PTT. The old test was called coagulation time or clotting time. But it was not very specific because it could only tell you that there is a problem with secondary hemostasis. But it, it could not distinguish between extrinsic or intrinsic. And that's why PT and PTT tests are way better. Disease symptoms, superficial bleeding, deep bleeding. This is mucocutaneous, but this is deep. Bleeding into joints, hemarthrosis. Bleeding into muscles, muscle hematoma. Brain hemorrhage, latery bleeding. Bleeding after tooth extraction and even GI bleed. Mineralgia and epistaxis can happen in either one. Why do you call it mineralgia? Meno is menses or menstruation. Raja means flow. It came from the word rayo, which means river. Have you ever heard of Rio de Janeiro? Medicine is literally full of rajas and rias. We have menorrhea, menorrhagia, bronchorrhagia, diarrhea, rhinorrhea, and even freaking gonorrhea. Clinically speaking, there is a difference between primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. Primary is asymptomatic or mucocutaneous bleeding. How about secondary? No, this is deep bleeding. Latery bleeding, hemarthrosis, deep muscle bleeding or muscle hematoma, cranial bleed, GI bleed, etc. You know the story of coagulation. I injure myself, vasoconstriction, temporary plated plug. If the trauma is very small, plated plug is enough. But if it's big, we need secondary hemostasis. We need the coagulation cascade to lay down the beautiful, strong fiber meshwork, trap the red blood cells, and then the clot will contract, releasing serum, and then fibrolysis, destroy the clot, and restore the function, and then regenerate the tissue. Step number one, vasoconstriction. It's a local myogenic spasm because we want to minimize the blood loss. Next, we have primary hemostasis. Platelet adhesion, platelet activation and secretion, platelet aggregation. Let's start the coagulation cascade. It's best to start it from down upwards. Okay, what's the end result? Fibrin meshwork. Great, so fibrin is here. It came from fibrinogen because it will cause genesis of fibrin. Beautiful. How do we go from fibrinogen to fibrin? Thrombin, baby, the protein of thrombosis, literally. Where did thrombin come from? From prothrombin. And that's why we call this factor one, because it's closer to the end result. Also, it's the first factor to be discovered. And then we discovered factor two, and then factor three, and the last one was factor 12, was up there. But then we discovered factor 13, which is to stabilize the fibrin from labile, unstable fibrin fibers into strong, stable, cross-linked fibrin fibers. And that's why patients with factor 13 deficiency suffer from late re-bleeding because they made a fibrin meshwork and then it got dissolved because it was not stabilized. And that's why late re-bleeding is a symptom of secondary hemostasis defect. So here we have prothrombin into thrombin, fibrin into fibrin. Before it, we have a cascade. After it, we have the fibrin stabilizing factor. So here is injury, vasoconstriction, platelet plug, and I have a fibrinogen. And then the mission of the coagulation casket is to take this fibrinogen and to convert it into fibrin fibers, strong fibers, and then the red blood cells will be stuck within the fibrin meshwork, and then it's gonna be a beautiful thrombus like this, full of fibrin fibers and red blood cells. Factor 13 will stabilize the fibers, and now we have clogged the vessel and prevented blood loss, hence, hemostasis. There are only two ways to coagulate, intrinsic and extrinsic, but there are several ways to bleed. Several ways to bleed including platelet adhesion defects such as Bernard Solier and von Willebrand disease, could be platelet aggregation defects such as Glenzmann thrombosthenia, ITP, paraproteinemia such as multiple myeloma, freaking uremia, P2Y12 inhibitors and GP2B3A inhibitors. Not to mention hemophilia A, hemophilia B, hemophilia C, factor 10 deficiency, factor 12 deficiency, factor 13 deficiency. 
Okay, so here's fiber and here's fiber engine, thrombin and here's prothrombin. How do we go from here to here? We need a prothrombinase, an enzyme that will act on prothrombin complex. Why complex? Because it has many members, actually four members. Two numbers and two words. What are the two numbers? Factor five and factor 10. And what are the two words? Calcium and phospholipid. I'm, I'm sorry, not just calcium, ionized calcium, active calcium. Because the non-ionized is not physiologically active, you can just jam it into bone to give it some structure, but it's not functionally or physiologically active. Have you ever seen a patient suffering from tetany due to decreased calcium in the bone? I've never seen that. It's only due to decreased calcium in the blood because it's the ionized physiologically active calcium. Okie dokie, fibrin, fibrinogen, thrombin, prothrombin. Here's the prothrombinase complex, five and 10, calcium and phospholipid, thank you. How do we activate 10 into 10A, A for active? We have two pathways, the extrinsic pathway and the intrinsic pathway. Okay, extrinsic pathway, you have the microphone. You can speak for yourself. Okay, I am called extrinsic, why? Because I need something from outside of the blood vessel extrinsic to me oh like such as the tissue oh yeah that will work tissue factor because when i injure myself the tissue got in contact with the blood because there is injury there is a continuation of the blood here and now the tissue factor came in contact with the blood specifically factor 7 factor 7 will become 7a which is active it will activate 10 to 10a with 5 phospholipid and calcium prothrombin thrombin fibrogen fibrin stabilize the fibrin thank you so much or I can activate factor 10 using the intrinsic pathway. Okay, intrinsic, get the mic closer to your lips and speak for yourself. I am intrinsic. Oh, so I need something from within the blood vessel, such as the subendothelial collagen. Oh yeah, that will work. Okay, subendothelial collagen will activate factor 12, then 11, and then nine and eight. Why not 10? Because 10 is here, baby. So basically it's eight, nine, 11, 12. Remember that von Willebrand factor is a carrier and a sustainer of the factor 8. We have talked about this before in my video on the von Willebrand factor as well as von Willebrand disease. The most common inherited bleeding disorder in the world. Let's do it from scratch, baby. Okay, here is fibrin. Where did fibrin come from? It came from fibrinogen. That's why fibrinogen is factor 1. Cool. How do we go from fibrinogen to fibrin? We need thrombin. Okay, where did thrombin come from? Thrombin came from prothrombin and that's why prothrombin is factor 2. Cool. And then how about the prothrombinase complex? Oh yeah, we have two numbers. What are they? 10A, 5A. And then two words. Ionized calcium, not just any calcium and membrane phospholipid. How do we activate 10 from inactive to active? We have two stories. We have the extrinsic pathway, all right, and the hero here is the tissue factor, also known as tissue thromboplastin, also known as tissue phospholipid or TPL, and this tissue factor will activate factor 7 into 7A, and then 7 will activate 10 into 10A, and then you know the rest of the story. Don't forget to stabilize the fibrin using factor 13. Here is a quick note, the tissue factor or the tissue thromboplastin is also known as factor 3. Nice, tell me about the intrinsic pathway. I need something from within, such as the subendothelial collagen. Okay, 12, 11, skip 10 because 10 is here. And then 9 and 8, don't forget to add von Willebrand factor to help factor 8. And then we'll activate 10 into 10A. 10 and 5, calcium and phospholipid prothrombin into thrombin, fibrinogen into fibrin, stabilize the fibrin, thank you. Is this hard? Everything in the extrinsic pathway has two letters. Here is extrinsic, cool, tissue factor or tissue thromboplastin. PT, prothrombin time, this is the lab test. What is the drug that will inhibit the extrinsic pathway? Mr. Warfarin or Coumarin or Coumadin or Dicumarol. Tell me about the beloved intrinsic pathway. I'm intrinsic, subendothelial collagen. The lab test is PTT and heparin will inhibit me. We have discussed the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic pathways before. Remember, extrinsic pathway is short. It has only factor seven. Because it's short, it's less efficient. However, intrinsic, it's longer. It has 12, 11, nine and eight, but it's more efficient. The shorter pathways gets the shorter lab test, only PT. And actually the normal value of PT is 15 seconds or less. However, the intrinsic is longer. We have four factors, 12, 11, 9, and 8. If it's longer, I need the longer name, PTT or APTT. What is the normal lab test for APTT? Normally, it should be 40 seconds or below. 
the name is longer and the normal value is longer. 14 seconds is longer than 15 seconds. Beautiful. Do you want another mnemonic? Yeah, how many letters are here? A, P, T, T, we have four letters. Yeah, and we have four factors. We have 12, 11, 9, and 8. Or you can say 8, 9, 11, 12. How many letters are here? P, T, 2. So we have factor 7 and we have factor 3, which is the tissue factor. Let's talk about the coagulation factor or the clotting factor. Secondary hemostasis. Are they proteins, fat, or carbohydrates? They are freaking proteins. Are they albumin or globulins? They are globulins. Are they alpha globulins, beta globulins, or gamma globulins? They are beta globulins. What are the gamma globulins? These are your antibodies or immunoglobulins. That is IgA, IgE, IgM, IgD, Ig whatever. Coagulation factors, they are proteins, specifically plasma proteins, they are globulins, specifically beta globulins. The source, they come from the liver. Yeah, albumin and globulin, they come from the liver. No, duh. Number, we have 12. Well, the last one is 13. Yeah, that factor 6 does not exist. Nomenclature. Each factor has a name and a number. The number is Roman numeral. The name could denote the function or could depict the disease such as anti-hemophilia A factor, which is factor 8, or the patient, such as Christmas disease. The patient's name was Christmas. And this is hemophilia B. If you look at the serum protein electrophoresis, here is albumin. Lots of albumin, and that's why albumin is the main contributor for osmosis. Yeah, because we have lots of it. And when it comes to osmosis or osmotic pressure, number matters and not the weight or the mass. The number, baby. That's why albumin matters way, 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 way more than globulin. And that's why sodium matters way, 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 way more than glucose because there's lots of sodium. The coagulation factors are here, beta globulins. What if you see the gamma globulins like this? It means it's probably multiple myeloma. We call this the M protein or the M spike. But do not say, oh, it's called the M spike, therefore it's IgM. No, 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 it's not IgM. IgM is Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. Multiple myeloma is IgG or at least IgA. Following is a rant, not to be taken seriously. It's just pure satire. Okay, Roman numerals. These are the Roman numerals. These are called Arabic numerals. I am so happy that Arabic numerals exist. Okay, let's say I'm preparing to file taxes. And let's say I earn this amount this year. Just suppose, okay? And I want to divide them by 12 to know how much money I earn per month. Okay, using the long division. The long division is complicated by itself. But can you imagine, can you contemplate doing this using Roman freaking numerals? Like the only thing that I can help you with here is factor 12. Can you imagine doing calculus using Roman freaking numerals? If I were you, I would jump off the freaking balcony. NASA, physics. Do you think we are capable of doing these complex equations and calculations using Roman numerals? I mean, Elon Musk would have never sent his rocket to space. In today's world, we only use Roman numerals for three things in life. Number one, king's name, such as King Henry VIII. How do we write eight? So here is seven, eight. The second thing is the Super Bowl, American football which I cannot understand. I mean, I'm more likely to understand the US tax code, this gigantic, enormous, thousands of pages document, than I am to understand American football. I mean, can someone please explain it to me? I will explain neuroanatomy for you in turn. Do we have a deal? And the third and last thing we use Roman numerals in are, brace yourself, the coagulation factors. Also, if you have Gray's Anatomy textbook from the 1920s, you might have the numbers of the chapters in Roman numerals. Enough with the jokes, let's go to science. Name, number, function. Factor number one, fibrin, ogen, function, polymerize to make fibrin, thank you. Two, prothrombin, function, it's serine protease to make thrombin. Factor three, tissue factor or tissue thromboplastin or tissue phospholipid TPL. It's a cofactor, it's going to activate factor seven, thank you so much. Factor four, not just any calcium, ionized calcium, the physiologically active calcium in the serum, and this is a freaking mineral. It's part of the prothrombinase complex and it helps many factors. Factor five is the labile factor or pro-accelerant. What does IN mean? It means a protein and this is acceleration. I'm pro-acceleration and it's a cofactor. How about factor six? It does not exist. Factor seven, the stable factor, the pro-convertin. Oh, because it gets converted into the factor seven A and then it converts factor 10 into 10 A. Love it, it's a serine protease. Factor eight is anti-hemophilia A factor and this is named after its disease. A deficiency of factor eight will give me hemophilia A. 
and we also call it anti-hemophilic globulin. It's a freaking cofactor. Factor 9, anti-hemophilia B factor, also known as Christmas factor. This was the name of the patient who had hemophilia B. And plasma thromboplastic component, or PTC. It's a serine freaking protease. How about factor 10? Stored prowa factor. It's a serine protease. Factor 11, plasma thromboplastin antecedent or plasma thromboplastin component, because PTA is kind of funny. Factor 12 is Hagman factor, a serine protease. Factor 13, the fibrin stabilizing factor that's going to stabilize the fibrin into stable fibrin fibers, also known as Lakey Luand factor. And this is a transglutaminase or transaminidase. Okay, let's play this game. Fibrinogen is factor 1, prothrombin is factor 2, tissue factor or tissue thromboplastin or TPL is factor 3. Factor 4 is the freaking calcium. Factor 5 is the labile factor. Factor 7 is the stable factor. Factor 8 is anti-hemophilia A. Factor 9 is anti-hemophilia B. Factor 11 is anti-hemophilia C. How about factor 10? This is the stored prawa factor. Factor 12 is the Hagman factor, and factor 13 is the fibrin stabilizing factor. I have 50 hematology cases about bleeding and coagulation disorders on my glorious website. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. These are difficult. Now let's talk about diseases. Fibrinogen, disease is called afibrinogen anemia. Okay, anemia means blood, fibrinogen is fibrinogen. A means no, there is no fibrinogen in the blood. How about prothrombin? Hypoprothrombinemia. How about factor five, which is the label factor? Parahemophilia. How about factor eight? Hemophilia A, factor nine. Hemophilia B, please skip 10 and go to hemophilia C. This is factor 11. How this is called stored prawa factor and this is called stored prawa factor deficiency. This is not super creative. You can also call it factor 10 deficiency. How about 12? The Hagman factor. So we have Hagman factor deficiency or Hagman trait or factor 12 deficiency. Fibrin stabilizing factor we have. This is called factor 13 deficiency. Question of the day. Which of the coagulation factors is the most heat unstable factor ever? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the answer in the next video. We'll talk about the three groups of the coagulation factors. We have the fibrinogen group, the prothrombin group and the contact group. Thank you for watching, you lovely people. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my 50 bleeding and coagulation cases and to get my antibiotics course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.